In the peak of the pandemic, we were unable to give face-to-face -face tutorials for students due to social distancing rules. As a result, the delivery of teaching for practical skills has been challenging, especially in ophthalmology. As a result, there's been a shift in the demand for medical education favoring online, electronic and socially distanced learning. This shift to online learning may be a daunting task for teachers with empty lecture theatres and teaching done on a computer screen with no live feedback from students in most cases. The task of creating a teaching video may put many of us outside our comfort zone even more. It's often thought that making an instructional video is very expensive, time consuming and requires professional equipment, but it doesn't have to be. With appropriate planning, you can easily produce a professional, polished and helpful video tutorial for students on a budget. In this short film, we'll show you the steps that we took to create a high quality video tutorial on performing a slit lamp examination. We didn't use expensive videography equipment or resources. The video we made has accumulated over 53,000 views on YouTube from learners across the globe. We'll be showing you behind the scenes on how we made it, plus video clips of the actual video tutorial itself as we go along. This video was created by myself with the help of one of my colleagues and a volunteer patient who was a nurse. Step one, planning, storyboarding and scripting. These are possibly the most important part of making a tutorial video. Storyboard your scenes for the teaching video. This outlines and visualizes what you plan to show. We made a rough storyboard sketching the main scenes with basic camera direction, screen transitions and animated text that we plan to use. When it comes to the script, think about your audience. We wanted this video to be tailored for medical students and junior clinicians that may be using a slit lamp for the first time. Therefore, we made sure it was clear and understandable for them. As you can see here, we made lots of amendments to our first draft of the script. We also got feedback from our senior colleagues. Step two, shooting your video. We used my smartphone camera for all the video recording. We bought a microphone, a mobile stand, and a slit lamp mount. We used one of our clinic rooms for the recording. We tried to remove all distractions from the room to make it look less cluttered and more professional. For moving or roaming shots, we used a tray on wheels as a makeshift dolly. These moving shots significantly increased the production quality with clever editing. The slit lamp mount allowed us to record images of the eye examination. Here are some clips of the anterior submit examination as part of the tutorial. And then turn the brightness up. You should see a cross section of the cornea. In clinical practice, you can increase the magnification and you should be able to visualize the different layers such as the epithelium, stroma and endothelium as shown here. We decided to add in a first person video perspective as it's shown to be an effective way of teaching. The teaching technique does not demand additional cognitive load to transpose action to the performance perspective. We used our local teaching room for shooting and recording the narration part. Using a condenser microphone was key to ensure good sound quality. We quality checked the recordings by having someone listen in with headphones as we went along. Step three, editing. Now it's time to get creative. The post-production editing was completed on a free video editing software called HitFilm Express. Now the editing stage is quite time consuming, but you can really make your footage look professional by using simple effects. For example, brightness and contrast adjustments along with colouring can make simple footage really stand out. Using clear and sharp text animation can increase the production value of the video and help the learners stay engaged. I also use a slightly more advanced technique of motion tracking alongside the animated text. Here's an example of motion tracked animated text. This video won't include an introduction to the posterior segment examination as this is a more advanced skill using an extra lens. This is not expected at a basic level. As this is a clinical skills tutorial, we found that pairing video footage with the script helped to enhance understanding of otherwise unclear instructional narration. Here's a video clip example from the tutorial showing the show and tell technique for explaining the use of fluorescein. The beam height control through one hard click and it should turn this color. Then widen the beam width and increase the brightness. If there is an epithelial defect and the fluorescein Now, if you really want to level up your editing skills, you could try using special effects and camera tricks. Here's an example. It's a short clip of where I use a special effect to get a point across 
which is simple but effective. Now keep in mind that this is a practical skill and the video is adjunct, so after you've watched this video, I strongly recommend heading down to the clinical skills area and practicing in pairs if safe to do so. The slit lamp allows So when you think you're done, don't forget to get feedback to catch any obvious mistakes. We found that another pair of fresh eyes was very helpful when proofing the video. The entire video tutorial is about 6 minutes long and is free to view on YouTube on the YouTube channel called iSurgeon. In under 18 months, the video has accumulated over 53,000 YouTube views. YouTube analytics show that has delivered over 2,500 hours of watch time. On reflection of these statistics, this many hours of delivered teaching would be very difficult to achieve in face-to-face -face tutorials. We initially made this video for local medical students and junior doctors. Locally, learners were asked to answer a pre-video and post-video survey for feedback. The questions asked them to rate their confidence at approaching different aspects of the slit line examination from 1 to 5. The results of this small survey show that the mean score increased in all areas in the post-video survey. The overall average of an increased score was 1.7 and all written feedback was positive. YouTube Analytics has shown that the video has been watched internationally in over 20 countries. Video education has many advantages including efficiency, convenience and individualised learning. Hopefully we have shown you that with the correct planning you can successfully create a high quality medical education video on a tight budget. We are delighted that the video tutorial has been utilised beyond our department and has been watched by thousands of learners on an international level. Video tutorials can be a feasible and powerful adjunct for teaching in a time where face-to-face -face tutorials are challenging. So many thanks for watching and we encourage you to try and make your own video tutorial yourself.